What up, Hashtag Nation and Bills Mafia? Welcome to another fun-filled episode of Hashtag Sports. Wait, I got to open it up a little different, Paul. Let me see. How's it? Let me, let me try this. Wait. What? No, wait. That's, that's <laughs> Drew. That's Drew. I can't do that one. There's not enough bourbon in you for no. that one, Mario. Yo, yo, yo. No, that's Dan. I was going to imitate Rico and Greg, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, I don't have enough. It's been a late night. Paul, um, hey guys, welcome to Hashtag, uh, hashtag Sports. You can find all of our social TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook in the um, description of this video, as well as our uh, sponsor, Mr. Rogers Homes, and in association with Cryer Media, all of our shows will be on iTunes and Spotify following the episode. Paul, after 10 years in the business, you and me. Well, I sound like you're getting a little cream of the crop for me there, Mario. A little macho man, right? And he said, the cream of the crop. <laughs> oh, never... yeah. I'm going to tell you right now, Mean Gene. Uh, yeah, it is. After 10 this years. This is what you guys came for. This, yeah. this is the content you guys came yeah. for. <laughs> <laughs> after 10 years, I don't care who I piss off. But let me tell you something that nobody's talking about. Or a few people might be, but I'm not watching. Let me just tell you, can we please get Josh Allen some freaking help? I saw a stat last year that said Josh Allen has never played with any number one picks, first round picks. I mean, can we get Allen a little bit of help on the offensive side of the ball, please? No one's talking about that. Uh, I feel like you and I are are on opposite sides on this, Mario, because I don't know if you know this. And I don't. I, I don't hear this talked about. So maybe I'm just like the lone person in the in Bills Mafia that knows this. But <laughs> if you like, it, so we'll have to excuse the 2022 draft. Right. So for this argument, let's excuse oh, the draft. Up? Okay. Yeah. Let's go. Let's talk about the draft. Right. Okay. So if we excuse 2022, okay. The Bills, cool. since Brandon Bean got here, have drafted 22 offensive players. You're lying. That's, and I mean, you think that that sounds like that's a, a lot. lot. It sounds like a lot, but remember, yeah. that's what, five years? How many? Yeah. Was, so 18, 19, 20, 21, yeah, 18, 19, 19, Four. So four drafts, right? And yeah. typically seven picks per draft, right? So you're the math guy. I don't I know. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> so about half, right? Yeah. Like yeah. you're looking at it, you're like, okay, about half their draft is offensive players. Okay. okay. Yeah, that sound that sounds reasonable. It does. How many of them yeah. are still with the team, Mario? Somehow I think you know this answer, but you're trying to I set do. me up. You're trying to bait me. I do. Um, I am trying to of the twenty two. They, they you yeah. said they drafted twenty two players since Brandon Bean. They've drafted twenty two offensive players. I won't Probably. look. I won't cheat. I won't. Okay. Um, okay. I'm gonna go. I'll I'll take the safe answer. I'll say eleven. Okay. I'll say they, so they at least say, kept. You'll half. say half because okay. I know Moss is in here anymore, and they drafted him. Right. I know Jack Anderson got poached. Right. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. Exactly. Certain players like that. And stuff, right. You got to so. figure that in. Right. Yeah. So if we really pull back and look, right. To, to go by draft year, so the only player remaining from the 2018 draft is Josh Allen, right? That's he's the only <laughs> offensive player remaining Get from, from that health. draft. Now, mind you, they drafted one, they drafted four offensive players, uh, one of them being Josh Allen. He's the only one that remains. From 2019, the only Com offensive Wait, comment down below if you know who the other four offensive players are that they drafted that year. Oh, oh, yeah, that's a fun one. That's, that's a fun, a fun one. because those, those late round picks are. I think a There's lot of those guys are still playing, though. Honestly, yeah, one I, of them is in the and one of them is in the XFL. Uh, actually, with AJ McCarron, as a matter of fact. Paul, Paul. To, I mean, just, we could be in the XFL. No one told us. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, 2019. <laughs> there's only one offensive player that remains still on the team. Again, there was one, two, three, four drafted. The only one that remains is Dawson Knox. This so doesn't 20, look good. From the 2020 draft, the only offensive player that remains is Gabe Davis. From the 2021, and again, you had one, two, three, four offensive players drafted in that draft. You see where we're going with this, right? 2020 wasn't all that long ago. In the no. 2021 draft, the uh, offensive players that you have, you 
we still got a few of these, right? You got Spencer Brown. You got Tommy Doyle. You no longer have Marco Stevenson. Uh, you no longer have Jack Anderson. Uh, and then you have to excuse 2022. So, again, five out of 22 players. Five, actually, four. Actually, three. Does Tommy Doyle even play? I got. Uh, we'll out. give him his due. It, it, was it the Miami game he played with a torn ACL? Yes. Yes. <laughs> we'll give the man his due. Yeah. Okay. I, I apologize to Mr. Doyle. That was amazing. But I'm talking about consistent. So you're telling me that of 22 selections since Josh Allen. Right. Including him, there's five offensive players yeah. that they've kept. Yep. So that's four. Doyle really doesn't play that much. Three. So we're talking about Spencer Brown, Dawson Knox, and, and Gabe, Davis. Gabe Davis. Yeah, end of the list. And people yeah. are complaining that Lamar Jackson doesn't get any help. Right. How many first-round wide receivers have they drafted for him? Oh, yeah, tons. Yeah, Baltimore does it every year. Anyway, but he does it every year. The, yeah. You're solidifying my point here, Paul. It's like, get this man some freaking help. The, I think the question, though, Mario, is can they, right? Like, because here, here's the thing, right? Buffalo has a tendency to lose players because they think that they can put them on their practice squad and hide them, right? So, like, you lost Jack Anderson. Paging Isaiah Hodges? Isaiah right, Hodges, yeah, you lost Isaiah up. Hodges because you had to keep Taiwan Jones, a move I still will never understand until I die because Taiwan Jones is now the oldest free agent running back on the free agent market. I still have no idea how he maintained a spot on this team as long as he did. But, like, you lost Jack Anderson. You lost Rashad Wild Goose a, a, a couple times. Um, <laughs> you cut Marquez Stevenson. You, you lost you uh, you lost Isaiah Hodgins, right? Yeah. Like you lose players from your practice squad because you're a good organization, right? But that the is problem true. is, I mean, you're losing yeah. you're losing the talent that you invest those those late picks in that you have to, you have to get these players to stay on your roster. Well, like, you're keeping you the to. wrong guy. Does that mean you're keeping the wrong guys? It you're does. drafting the right ones, but keeping the wrong ones. Well, I think what happens, Mars, if you look at the Bills. You know, the way that they've handled their team is yeah. they draft, but they also sign those veterans and the veterans are the ones that seem to maintain the roster spots because they Buffalo is really conservative like that, you know. So like, yeah, yeah. you draft uh, Rashad Wild Goose. Right. But then you yeah. also signed uh, you also signed uh, Josh Norman, you know, so who's going to get that roster spot? Josh Norman's getting that roster spot, not Rashad yeah. Wild Goose. Yeah, you know what weird. I mean? Like it's that kind of stuff that they do. Weird. That hand the their development of the young talent. It does. It does. And they almost did that last year. We mentioned on a live um, a few days ago about you know Christian McCaffrey. If you would have signed tr Christian tr or traded for McCaffrey, you would have stunted the growth of James Cook. Which I right. think by the end of the season, you saw flashes. I'm not going to sure. put all my eggs in the James Cook basket, but you saw flashes. Yeah. Um, but like solidifying my point of about, you know, Josh Allen is the franchise and he's getting paid as such. Mm -hmm. This guy needs some help on the offensive side of the ball. If, mm -hmm. if you, dra since you've drafted him five years ago, you've kept three consistent starters on the team on the offensive side of the ball and you try to pick up all the stuff in free agency. Mm -hmm. Well, you don't have the money to do that this year. So, right. I guess in a roundabout way, I'm asking you, Paul, what are you saying that Bean is going to break character in this draft and go for broke? I mean, when you're spending when you when you're spending the money on a quarterback, Mario, what other options do you have? Right. Can you continue to pump three and four million dollars into veteran guards and have like just a collection of them? Well, like the bills have done the last few years, like at some point getting real close to the cap hurts you because and, and you know this yes. the cap you don't use rolls over from year to year but yes. buffalo has consistently spent near up to the cap in the last three seasons and then they've restructured to give themselves some space and that kind of hamstrings you in future seasons right yeah but then they're spending like three million dollars on forest lamp or you know like they're gonna like it's that's the silly that's the silly <laughs> stuff that they do and then you look at it you're like well damn i really would have liked to have had jack anderson for eight hundred thousand dollars for right three now. years instead of 
signing Forrest Lamp and then cutting him, but, you know, still ultimately losing out on the money that we signed him for. And that, or, you know, then you go back to Quentin Spain, you know, like you signed Spain to a deal and then you end up releasing him because of some nonsense, right? Like there's been a lot of mismanagement of money on this team and it's finally biting you in the ass. And I don't know of any other way to solve it besides the draft. Well, I mean, I understand that we, cause we, we, we really hammer the table quite a bit about the, you know, the cheapest way to do it is in the draft. And when you're up against the cap, this is some of the things that this, this day was eventually coming. We saw yeah. it. You saw it before anybody. You told me, and I was like, "Oh, I'm gonna have a hard time explaining this to people, and they're not gonna get up. They're not gonna be happy." But being who Bean is, and how great he is at the cap and manipulating the cap and manipulating contracts, do you think that? Yes, the cheapest option is the draft. However, draft capital, especially this time of year, is gold. Mm-hmm. And with your team being successful as it is. Your draft capital is not as gold as some as others. You know, yeah. remember that back in the day, the Bills' draft capital was w- what you wanted. Yeah. Um, but now, could he? I'm just asking a hypothetical. Could he be one to trade multiple picks for proven players and do what he does with their salary in their contracts, extending, putting in voided years, putting in just reworking deals? so that they are as close as they could be to a drafted player? Uh, I mean, for the exercise that we ran earlier, right? Yeah, We yeah. excluded Stefan Diggs from being a drafted player because he wasn't, right? Well, yeah, I, true, because you, 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 yeah, you got rid of that pick. Right. I think, Mar, what ends up happening, and I mean, I, I, think, I think you and I are probably on the same page here. When you start trading picks, for players, it's more expensive than the pick, right? Like you're getting yeah. somebody else's contract that they negotiated. And yeah. yeah, you can rework it and you can sprinkle some magic salary cap dust on it and just pretend like the salary cap is a myth. But like, how far does that really get you, Mar? No, I know. I understand that. But you got to understand, first of all, how many people lost their minds earlier in this video? That we didn't mention Diggs until now. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, I, I can't wait to see all the com- for you to see all yeah. the comments. You're right. Diggs, guys, you guys are idiots. I'm turning this off. Yeah, right. Um, but the thing about it is you you like you know as well as I do, you taught me this. When a player gets traded for, the team that is gaining that player doesn't have to account for any of the bonus. Right. So you start at zero. So you could take the base to bonus and prorate it. Mm-hmm. That's how you drop it down initially. What right. I'm saying is do you think that that is an it, it, maybe it does cost a little bit more? You're right, but do you think that that would be an option that Bean would explore trying to get a proven player over obviously missing a few times? Because since 2018, since you drafted Josh Allen and traded up for that seventh pick, only four other offensive players are still on this team. Yeah, that is not that is not you're not a good drafter of offensive talent or. You are, and you're keeping the wrong guys. Right. Like, if there's more offensive talent that you've drafted on other teams right now than on your own, something is wrong. Right. There's yeah, a disconnect. I, yeah, and I think that's just a product of how conservative uh, McDermott is, right? Because McDermott yeah. loves those veteran guys that show up and chop wood every day <laughs> and get their 10,000 steps in and just – like every cliche of culture and hard work, McDermott <laughs> just slurps that up, right? But it's there. There comes a there comes a tipping point where you have to start betting on your scouting department and your abilities. And I'll be honest with you, Mark. As you start losing coaches from the staff, right, or executives from the staff, what happens, right? Where, where do you see the hits? You see, your him in your scouting, goes. you see yeah. him. Yeah. You see him in your scouting department. Right. Yeah, so as yeah. you lose a guy to be a GM, you lose your assistant GM or your player pro player personnel guy to yeah. be a GM. He's going to take some scouts with him. When you lose guys like that, you, you lose information, right? You lose the ability and the consistency to scout. Guess what hasn't happened this year? Buffalo hasn't lost those guys. Right. They haven't no, really no. lost those pro player Last personnel guys to goofy. other front ends, to other front offices. Last year, there that was a big problem, right? This year, hasn't happened. 
So if there was ever a time for them to invest in the offense through the draft, this is the first year in a couple where you haven't lost executive level leadership and part of your scouting department. Cause you, you know, you'd lost Abel last year. You were going to lose, you were going to lose some position players and some scouts. You, sh- you had shown you're going to lose, you're going to lose position players and scouts, right? Like this is the first year Buffalo hasn't lost anybody like that. So does that make it more of a case that they should be drafting or I, what you said, maybe they don't trust their scouting department and they start trading for veteran players. I don't, I don't know, but I, I think one of the other things that has to be asked and I'm going to ask hashtag nation. I'm going to ask you, Paul, you don't have to answer it now. You could, I'll give you the option to, if you want, because this is a panel show. Unlike any other <laughs> with the departure of Leslie Frazier, mm-hmm. do you, and the loss as we predict Poyer and Edmonds. Yep. Do you think more of an onus will be on McDermott? His, you think his focus will be on the wrong side of the ball this year? depending on what his scouting department wants or not. Yeah. I mean, I think good organizations draft. Uh, they they don't draft for where they're, where they need a player. Right. Like I think once you're looking at it, you say, well, we need a receiver. So we have to draft a receiver it, at our pick. Right. Bean has done a good job of saying, I think we need this. So I'm going to go get it as opposed to just sitting there and letting it fall to him and just taking yeah. the best player at that position. Um, you know, Bean's done a good job, I think, there. The downside is that it's primarily been for defensive talent, right? So, I mean, I don't know, dude. You know, yeah. like, if you Because you Bean, could say, listen, I trust my drafts as far as the defensive side of the ball goes. Right. Let me trust my offensive side of the ball. Right. I mean, The guys that we've drafted can fill in. If you were Bean... What would you do? If I'm being, I'm pulling a play that nobody sees coming because if you think you're going to be successful in the years to come, where does your draft picks land you at the end of the rounds? Mm-hmm. Would you be bold enough if you were Brandon Bean to trade a future first round pick to move up and get your guy that, that is the playmaker among playmakers? You trade a 2024 and your 27th pick to move up. There are teams that would take that. The teams always yeah. take that every year. They always yeah. take two Have firsts. Future, future firsts. First yeah, future future firsts first are gold. Right. They are gold. But that is prob- that is the extent I would think that Brandon Bean would go if he does not trust himself. Hmm. Be like, this guy is literally a can't miss. This kid might be a miss, but this kid is literally a can't miss. I'm going to go get, like you said, to true to form. I'm going to get him because I know I'm not wrong about him. Nobody is. Right. So I'll give up a future asset that I don't have to make a decision on <laughs> for him. Right. He's done it before with Diggs. Yeah. Will he do it? Will he do it in this draft? I don't know. You leave, leave your comment down below, uh, hashtag nation, if you think that a bold move is coming from Brandon Bean this year.